Hi, everyone. Welcome to Fridays with Friends. I'm Margaret Kosick, Senior Attorney with Coast to Coast Legal Aid of South Florida. I'm here with the Advocacy Director and Founder of Florida Health Justice Project, Miriam Harmetz. Welcome, Miriam. Thank We're you. very That's happy to have you here today to discuss some big changes with Medicaid. <laughs> Thank you so much. Good to be here. So can you tell me more about the Florida Health Justice Project and what your mission is? Sure. We were founded about five years ago with a mission of expanding access to health care for Florida's most vulnerable, marginalized populations and promoting health equity. Uh, and we do this by identifying and working with partners to address systemic barriers to care. Um, we, we describe our work as using every tool in the advocates toolkit um, from primarily education, uh, litigation if necessary, and, and all of the work is made possible by um, partnering with individuals who want to join with us in this system-wide advocacy, whether through sharing their stories or as plaintiffs in a lawsuit. Okay, so the, the big topic we wanted to discuss today is the unwinding of the continuous Medicaid provision. Um, for those watching, the continuous Medicaid provision ended on March 31st, 2023, putting millions of Floridians um, who rely on Medicaid at risk of losing their coverage. Um, so what was the initial purpose of the continuous Medicaid provision? It was part of early pandemic related legislation that was passed by Congress. This was signed into law by then President Trump. And what the uh, continuous coverage requirement did was provided states with significant additional federal funding to keep everyone on Medicaid who was eligible at the time when uh, starting in March, 2020 uh, and, and having a moratorium on terminations until it was ended, as you said, March 31st, 2023. And, and the purpose was, um, was to keep people insured while we were going through a major worldwide healthcare crisis. And Medicaid really was a key tool there in you know, mitigating the, the loss of life and health that would have been even worse had we not had it. Yeah, that, that was very important. Um, so now that uh, the Medicaid, continuous Medicaid provision is unwinding, what do Medicare beneficiaries need to be concerned about? Well, they have to. There's been a lot of um, uh, education, and hopefully people on Medicaid have heard by now that they need to update their address and information with the Florida Department of Children and Families, DCF, to uh, set up an access account online if they haven't already and they possibly can do that on a computer. Um, and if they um, uh, are getting notices about time to renew or redetermine to make sure that they provide all the information that DCF is requesting and get it back to DCF. So those are the main mantras that everybody has been. Update your information, okay. make sure your address is accurate and get your forms back on time. People have okay. been, DCF has been going through redeterminations for the past three years, but it didn't matter. People would get, you know, hey, it's time to redetermine, send your, et cetera, in. Didn't matter if they did or didn't, they stayed on Medicaid. And for many people, this is the first time they've had to go through this annual renewal. So, so many people who were technically ineligible were still able to keep it. That's correct. That's correct. And, 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 um, if you want to go through some examples of who those people are and who's going to be most impacted. Right. Um, yeah, that's what was, that's my, that was going to be my next question. <laughs> who, who is most likely at risk of losing Medicaid right now? Jumped ahead of you. So if we could, if Jeff, if you're able to pull up Florida Health Justice Project's webpage on the unwind, we have, um, we have materials that, and most of the materials there, and it's scroll down a bit, um, our information for advocates, like legal services programs, navigators, some client facing materials. And here is that very, that answers that question, that one right there, Jeff, stop. 
It's Florida Medicaid recipients at risk. And the first Q&A there at the top is, and the, the visual to the left is for parents and caregivers who are now over income. That will be the main group of people losing eligibility. And the, the typical scenario is to think about in the early days of the pandemic, for example, many, many people lost their jobs, low-income parents. Some may have already, they had kids who were already on Medicaid, uh, others enrolled in Medicaid along with their children because their incomes were at or near zero. And uh, typically in Florida, the income limit for parents and caregivers is very, very low. It's less than 30% of poverty. But when you had no income, they became eligible. And then people went back to work. And if you're working even part-time minimum wage in Florida, you're a, a, a parent is over income. And for example, if you have one child, a parent cannot earn more than $469 in order to stay on Medicaid. And many people now earn more than that. Um, or if you have two kids, the limit is $590. So that's one major population of people still very low income, still needing health care, but they're going to be many of them over income now for Medicaid. Okay. So those are the main people who really need to look out for those notices and, and um, get some help on Medicaid. So that, that leads to my next question. What yeah, is and there's some, if, yeah, you want to, can, can we just, they, I mean, those are, that's one of the groups and, and, and statistically those will be most of the people we expect who would be no longer eligible, but other groups that are at risk because they're likely to be no longer eligible are those parents and caregivers who no longer have a minor child under 18. Um, the uh, people on medically needy, um, people who have received Medicaid based on age and disability who are now on Medicare, former foster children who have now turned 26 or older over the past three years. Um, and then one group that's um, really important to flag uh, because there's been no outreach or education to identify these folks. And that's 19 and 20 year olds mm -hmm. because they are in Medicaid um, in Florida uh, because we're one of the states, 10 states now that has not expanded Medicaid. Income is limit is very, very low for parents, caregivers, 19 and 20 year olds, any adults. For children, it's much, much higher. Low-income families who go to legal aid programs like Coast to Coast, most of the kids should stay on Medicaid. We should not, we should, you know, red flags should go up if you see children losing Medicaid eligibility. It goes um, it's highest for infants, goes gradually down for up to age 18, and then falls off a cliff when you're 19. From, for example, in a household of two, it would go from, for the 18 year old, from 16, about over 1600 a month family income down to, for a family of two, um, I'm sorry, family of, of two is 2000 for the 16 to 18 year old, $2,268. And then it drops way down to, when the child turns 19, 469. Wow. Same as the parent, but the 19 or 20 year olds, if they've turned 19 or 20, they could stay on Medicaid under certain circumstances if they apply as a household of one. And that's a really critical benefit for many youth. If they um, qualify, they're earning less than 350 on their own. Even if they still live at home, they can apply as a household of one, but nobody knows that they have that right. So that's a really important group to reach out to and educate. Okay, that's good to know. Um, so what are you at Florida Health Justice Project doing to help advocates, navigators, and providers prepare for helping these people who are at risk of losing Medicaid? Well, Jeff, if you could, we have a lot of materials. Uh, we've been doing a lot of trainings, um, creating and sharing materials, um, meeting with folks like you all. Uh, and one of the main, if you have time to do one thing, it would be look at this video. It's not, don't start the running video now yet, Jeff, but it's, um, it's 19 minutes. 
oops, and it goes mm -hmm. through um, helping people understand what we just went through, these examples of how do you understand who's eligible for Medicaid in Florida, who's likely ineligible when given that the state has returned to normal eligibility standards, what people, um, you know, what if, if is the notice correct? Um, if there is, if, if it's incorrect, how to appeal. Um, it, it helps explain to people that if they're now over income parents, caregivers for Medicaid, or they no longer have a minor child, but their income is below 100% of poverty, it explains why they're in a coverage gap and unable to get a subsidy in the federally facilitated marketplace. Um, and it and it provides you know, a number of tools to help um, advocates and providers figure out, you know, is the, was the income calculated correctly um, and so on. So Medicaid is complicated. Uh, we're here to um, provide technical assistance whenever possible. I don't know, Jeff, if you could, does the portal open up and we could just show people where some of the materials no, not there. But you go to this website and you'll find you'll find the video and the and the portal materials have a lot of resources there. And if uh, somebody wants to refer, if one of the partners want to refer people who have gotten termination notices, is there um, yeah it, a referral form? There is right on, on same website, Jeff. If you could scroll down slightly. Uh, down on the website. Yeah, once more. There you go. It's called an advocate. Back up, back up, <laughs> back up, a little bit back, a little bit further back, up above that one. And then you've got it. One more up. There you go with a red circle. That's a form for advocates to refer. Um, now, Margaret can figure out everybody's eligibility there and help people in Broward County. But if anybody's hearing this outside of Broward County, and you're working with someone who wants has gotten a terminate a notice saying your Medicaid benefits are going to end, and they think that that decision is wrong or they don't understand it. You can fill out this online form and upload a copy of the notice and send that to Florida Health Justice Project. Okay, great, thank you. And um, is there any other way? Uh, do you have, is there any other way to contact you if anybody has questions just about Medicaid terminations in general? Yes. Um, and it's not, uh, I'm, I'm, it is on the, on the, um, it's in the portal. It's not on the website page, but there's a Q and A and we can um, send you the link for that for your listeners. You can look at it. It's a Q and A that explains <clears throat> um, what the, uh, what to do if you get a notice it says, what should I do if I got a notice and I don't understand it, or I don't think it's right. And it, it walks through what the different scenarios are. And it includes this, this uh, online, you know, retool that and people are self refer people are finding that and self referring. Um, and it also explains that, um, you know, where to send the appeal and how to send it <clears throat> because the notices currently they're very confusing and, and they, at the end it says, and if you disagree, you can appeal, do that by calling the uh, call center. It's very hard, I hear, to get through to the call center now or go to DCF, that's also hard. There's, there are 5 million people going through this redetermination mm -hmm. process, about 500,000 a month. Um, and so the better way to appeal is to send an email and the address for the email um, is in the Q and A, and that's that's really important information, and it's not in the current notice. Well, wow, that's very helpful. Thank you. So, um, well, I, I also want to mention quickly for anybody who lives in Broward County who's at risk of losing Medicaid um, and wants advice on whether you are still eligible to continue receiving Medicaid or are eligible for covered, uh, uh, any other coverage, you can also contact us at 954-318-4038 or apply online at coasttocoastlegalaid.org. Um, was there anything else you wanted to add before we go, Miriam? Um, well, just um, that 
it's it's chaos and confusion this process called the unwind all over the country and if you're in the health advocate world it's all people are talking about and all hands on deck and un, unfortunately it's even worse in florida because as i mentioned we're one of um, 10 states that has not expanded Medicaid. And so while uh, Medicaid recipients, of other states are gonna be no longer eligible, they'll get notices terminating their coverage, they will have a path to affordable coverage, either through the marketplace or through if they're in an employer uh, plan now, if they've gone back to work and that's why their income's now too high for Medicaid. But in Florida, we have this coverage gap for people who are over income or no longer eligible, but below 100% of poverty. And so it's really important to reach out to advocates like um, Margaret, if you're in Broward County, who if you run into issues and you may wanna speak about this, Margaret, with accessing your local safety net, um, you need to be able to do that. And, and, and to reach out to us, one of the things, as I mentioned at the beginning that we do is share stories. And um, we have also, a website um, that I can see if Jeff can quickly pull up that that shares stories of people who are going through the uh, uh, lo losing Medicaid with the unwind, um, and it helps educate our um, the public about what Florida families and individuals are experiencing with um, what's happening now in our state. So. Thank you for looking at those materials and Margaret and Jeff for this mm -hmm. opportunity and all that you do for, for your clients there in Broward County. Thank you so much for joining us and for talking about this very important topic right now. It's really great to know that um, we have you to rely on. Um. <laughs> and our team. We have quite yeah. a little small but mighty team at the Board of Health <laughs> Justice Project. Yeah. So thank you again. Um, and thank you, everybody, for joining us. Be sure to check out Fridays with Friends in the future and follow us on social media.